in your first full year, you did $20 million in, in real estate sales. How in the world were you able to have such success so quickly? It's really just uh, focused on your process, your reverse selling process. I go in there having them sell me on why their property is so great. I am in a desperate, desperate race against myself. All right, so really quick, before we jump into the interview, if you hear anything in the interview that makes sense, it inspires you, it motivates you, and you'd like to have a conversation with me about potentially working together, I'd be happy to do so. I'm gonna put a link in the description right underneath this video, and I'll pin a comment in the comment section beneath this video. Feel free, if you want to, you can click that link, you can schedule time to jump on my calendar, and we can have a conversation on whether now now's the right time for you to get into coaching. Either way, if now's not the right time, no problem. Watch the video. I hope you get great value from the content. And if you have any questions after the interview about any of the tactics or the strategies that we discuss, you can put them in the comments section. I'll be happy to get back to you. So let's jump into the interview. All right, you guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today, my guest, in his first year, did $20 million in real estate residential sales. He was also invited to the, ex uh, he had an exclusive invitation to Sotheby's top performer programs. With me today, I have Ali Safavi. Ali, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Brandon. Excited to be here. Absolutely. And the people are excited to hear how in the world were you able to have such success so quickly? So we're going to unpack that all today for the audience. But before we jump in, um, so as we're shooting this, give us a little bit of context as far as how long you've been in the business and where do you actually sell real estate? Sure, yeah. So um, I have somewhat of an unfair advantage because I've done a thousand real estate transactions prior to being licensed. Uh, I was a real estate investor. I am a real estate investor for 20 years. Uh, I was formerly an executive at the Walt Disney Company managing Disney's international business. So name of country, I've been there twice. Before that, I was at P&G. And then before that, I have a law degree and an MBA. So in some ways, I feel like I have an, kind of this unfair advantage. But to answer your question, uh, I've been licensed just under a year and a half. Uh, I'm in Santa Monica, California, where price per foot here is $1,600 bucks if you get a deal. Yeah. <laughs> and um, with Sotheby's and it's been really fun. That's great, that's great. And uh, thank you for unpacking your background because um, yeah, I think in some ways maybe you're right, but in some ways it's just led you to where you're at today. Um, and hopefully in the future, the real estate industry is able to get more talented people such as yourself getting into the industry because as you know now, the norm is people come in this industry with zero business background. Sure. zero experience, never sold anything before. So they struggle very, very much. So, um, all right. So you are in the, uh, in the, in the residential sales side, year and a half, you're in probably one of the most competitive markets in the country for sure. So in your first full year, you did $20 million in, in real estate sales. Uh, let's unpack that. So first and foremost, Walk us through um, what is the lead generation strategy? Where did the business come from? So um, I actually like to say last year was year zero, and this year is really uh, year True. one uh, because it, it wasn't until, believe it or not, June of last year until I got my first listing. Okay, <laughs> and it True. was yeah, yeah, it was because really the first six months I was uh, focusing on buyers, and I didn't know that that wasn't what you were supposed to do. So uh, I stumbled upon some of your videos and have been hooked on it ever since. My team is a huge uh, fan of yours. And uh, so the lead generation answer your question has really uh, turned on uh, three pillars, which is one is FISPOs, uh, two are the expireds, and three is uh, Sphere. So um, those are the lead generation Yeah, I love folks. it. Yeah, that's great. And, and there are three great pillars of business that you can really optimize over time, get really good at. Uh, and in your case, you, um, you, 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 you produce a lot of business going after those three markets. And we're going to talk about what you're doing to, to work each one of those in just a second. Um, going back for just a second, your first six months, mm -hmm. I think is really important because 
that's where I think a lot of agents really struggle uh, the most. And so when you got into the industry um, on, on the sales side of things, talk to me about maybe like what you were doing or some of the early learnings um, that maybe overwhelmed you in the beginning that, that you tried because there's so many shiny objects. I mean, right. you and I both know realtors are trying everything under the sun on this constant chase for the path of least resistance. What was that first six months like for you before you really got plugged in? You know, you don't know you're wet if you're underwater, right? So I was just kind of swimming and um, trying this shiny object. Oh, what about this Facebook thing? And what about this other uh, meeting that I should go to? Or, oh, look, check out this open house. And, you know, it felt productive, right? Because yeah. you're, you're with um, like-minded colleagues and, and what you find really quickly is you could uh, mix up activity and results. And so I was doing activity, but they weren't productive, right? Until again, I found your program. And by the way, in full transparency, I wanted to do this interview because I felt like I've robbed you <laughs> and I felt like I've stolen from you. So I want to apologize on, you know, public air here is that, um, in full transparency, I, I've not given your program a dime, but it was right. because of your program that led me to 25 million plus. I also have another, I'm going to say 35 million in listings right now, of which if you know, even half of them close, that's, that's pretty good. So um, it's really just uh, focused on your process, your reverse selling process. And uh, again, in those first six months, I was, I was lost. <laughs> yeah, trying a bunch of different things. And um, you know what, quite frankly, to your point, I wish everybody would just execute on what I asked them to do. But you know, sure. accountability is really the thing that people need to get over the hump. And so you've been able to take the information, piece it together and make it work. So what is it specifically, if you had to walk us through step by step that you've learned uh, through, through the reverse selling system that has helped you go out there and secure so much business in, su in, in such a short amount of time? Sure. I mean, I think I could do it in under 90 seconds. I developed a not top 10 and a top 10 list. And it was really just springboarding off of your learnings. But the first, you know, I'm going to start with not top 10 first. And the first is not top 10 of number one is taking advice from skinny chefs. Right. Mm. So um, that that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, folks are going to give you all kinds of pearls of wisdom, so to speak, but um, you have to look at who's giving you that advice. Number two is measuring progress forward instead of backwards, right? Because if you measure progress to where you want to be, which is really ultimately just a moving uh, target anyways, you're going to fall in what's called the gap and you're, you're going to be demotivated really, really quickly. Uh, number three is not protecting 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., as I like to say. Again, I'm just talking about my not top 10. And number three is 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you don't protect that really quickly, you're not going to be successful in this business. Number four is uh, not uh, or number four is the, on the not top 10 is wasting a fail. So anytime you fail and you fail all the time, I fail all the time. My goodness, if you want to talk about 25 mil, but what about all the deals I didn't close? You know, if you if you waste a fail, Brandon, you're going to be um, you you just miss an opportunity. Number five is taking overpriced listings, especially in our market. You know, everybody thinks their their property is a trillion dollars, right? And you're a new agent, you're a rookie, so you're you're going to take that. Uh, but you know, you don't want to take overpriced listings. Number six, this is a crit critical one: saying yes more than no, and just track that every day. How many times do you say yes versus you say no? right? Uh, number seven, this is pretty self-explanatory, but not exercising. I exercise every day, sometimes twice a day, hugely important. Number eight on the not top 10 list is comparing yourself to somebody else, right? You like to say comparing your chapter one to somebody's chapter 10, right? That's right. Number nine, not following up. My goodness, so basic. But that's number nine on my list. And by the way, none of these are in any kind of priority. It's just sure. kind of top of mind. And then number 10 is giving up. So mm -hmm. if you're asked for my learnings on the not top 10 side, those are it. So that's for my, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And we're going to unpack that. I want to, uh, I mean, these are so good, Ali. I mean, because 
I can't wait to get to the top 10 of the things that have served you the most, which we will get into. Uh, sure. But some of these are just so, so good. And I hope for all of you watching or listening to this on the replay, really heard what Ali was saying, because you probably, yeah, Brandon, I heard the words. I heard what he said. But what you're really messaging, I mean, are some really good things. I mean, look at number four uh, for a second, which is essentially not optimizing the failures. In other words, I think you're exactly right that people look, especially in this industry, with a lack of experience, they look at mistakes and they look at the failures and they look at the rejection as things that get them down, where guys like you and I look at those are the actual things that move us forward. It's quite the opposite approach. And so I love that. And I could, you and I could have a whole podcast on all 10 of those and maybe we will in the future. So that's really, really good. So let's, let's unpack your, your top 10 uh, on things that you find are serving you uh, at the highest level. Sure. Yeah. So my top 10, number one is just reading the defense. You know, I'm, I'm a big sports fan. We'll, we'll overlook the fact that you're, a, you're a Michigan fan. I'm a big Tennessee fan, but that's okay. That's for a different. Fair enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, number one is just reading the defense. What that means in English is you got to read the audience, right? And so a lot of folks are surprised when I go to a listing appointment or a preview appointment and I bring nothing, zero, no decks, no numbers, nothing. I go in then I go in there having them sell me on why their property is so great. And I try to talk them out of selling. It's the whole reverse selling model. So I don't bring any decks, any numbers, anything, but you got to read the defense. You got to read your audience. That's number one. Um, number two, this is a big one. I, I would triple underline and double star this one. The person with the most intentionality in the room wins. Yeah. Hugely important. And by the way, I didn't make any of this stuff up. This is all like regurgitated, but I, I will tell you, uh, and my wife has a PhD in this stuff. She has intentionality in every single conversation. She wins every time. That's right. So the, the person who, who has the most intentionality in any conversation, any forum, any industry always wins bar none, no exceptions. Number three, I think Denzel Washington said this, but falling forward, mm. you got to fall forward. You don't want to fall backward, right? Yeah. And he always he jokes. He says, look, I got to, if I'm falling forward, at least I know where I'm falling, right? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Metaphorically, but you, you got to know where you're falling, right? And you want to fall forward. Um, Number four, and I like this one, you can't change people around you. You can't, but you can change the people around you. Mm, tell us more. So unpack that. I love this. This is so good. Okay. So in English, what that means is, look, I'm not going to change somebody who's on my team. If they're an analytical data junkie, I'm not going to get them right in front of a high-flying seller. That's just not going to happen because that's, that's out of their element. So I'm not going to change that person, right? But can I change the role? Can I bring somebody else to step into that role and talk to that seller who's more outgoing, who, who's more polished, who has more sales skills? So you can change roles. You can change people in different roles on your team, but you can't change that person. I love Really, it. really critical. We, we call that on our team, putting people in a position to win. Putting right. the right people in the right position to win. I love it. Right, right. Uh, the next one is uh, the, the game is easy. Practice is hard. Mm. Okay, so every time I go on a preview appointment, it's like relaxing to me. Because I've, I've led all the things that I've done during the week. I'm a big sports junkie. All the top coaches talk about this. It's the practice during the week that prepares the team for the game day. And it's the same thing as, as an agent, as a salesperson. Um, I think I'm on number six, but either you are on an appointment or you're setting an appointment. That's it. If I'm doing anything else during the day, I outsource that or I say no to it. Love it. And it, and it irritates people. It does. It does. Yeah. Until they see the results, until I get things on my Instagram. Oh my God, you're crushing it. How did you do all this? Or, you know, how'd you get that listing, et cetera. You know, and people switch <laughs> really quickly when they yeah. see the results. Well, and it, uh, and it yeah. goes back to, uh, okay. So that's so funny. I don't know if you planned that your number six on your top 10, uh, uh, 
most successful tips is is number six on the other list. Did you know that? Like tracking the yeah, yeses I was and the trying notes. to signal it. Yeah. yeah. So so what's so in, what's so critical about that, Ali, is that when you talk about tracking what you're saying yes to, what you're committing to, you're saying no to the things that actually matter. And so what we need to get really good at as people, to your point, is is saying no to almost everything so that we can say yes to the only two things that matter, which you just nailed them. We're either on an appointment or we're looking one, we're looking for one. Period. End of story. There's nothing right. else to talk about. Love it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and uh, next one, number seven is bend, but don't break. Mm. So that's another one. It's kind of from sports. It's 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 okay to bend, right? It's okay to um, and and bending can mean you're flexible. It can mean um, you had a bad day, you had a bad hour, but brush it off, have a short term memory, and yeah. keep moving on. You know, uh, number eight, huge, tactical but huge. Please, please, please hire a TC. Just do it. I'm terrible at paperwork. I told my broker. I told everybody. I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try to get better. I'm going to strengthen my strengths, which means yep. I can go on a listing appointment and my conversions are about 90%. They're, they're pretty darn high. So let yep. me do what I'm good at, but I'm going to let, I'm going to outsource everything else. And, and one of the keys is hiring a TC, three, four, five hundred dollars for per transaction. <laughs> pays it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. No-brainer. I mean, the no money brainer. you make at a listing appointment, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's no business case to learn paperwork. None, right? Zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is yours. I think you say this on every one of your YouTube videos. But number nine is, is is be obsessed with the process and detach from the outcome. And let me tell you, Brandon. I when I was seven years old, my father taught me this in his own way. And what he told me is, he said, "Look, have a safety net. Whatever the safety net could be. I mean, at that age, it could be uh, whatever a, a, a toy or a game thing. But and for me now." It's, you know, uh, rental income that I have from my other uh, investments. And because you have a, because you have a safety net, you're able to be detached from the outcome because you're not reliant on the income. And when I go on and meet with these sellers, they know that I'm not hungry or obsessed with getting that listing or that income. I'm completely detached from it. I'm having a great time, you know? And let's pause for a second. So that right there is literally, Ali, the foundation of my life's work. When, when the other person, because I thought you were going to get into this earlier, but it was, it was great how you, how you articulated it. The person who actually is the more detached in any interaction also has the most influence. So in other words, for the audience, the one who appears less attached to whatever it is that we're, we're discussing, the outcome is the, always the one who holds all of the leverage, all of the influence, and all of the authority inside that interaction. And so as soon as a prospect, in our case, in real estate, a seller, understands that you're going to succeed regardless if they list their home with you, is the exact moment they want to list their home with you. Because, exactly. because most agents go in there needy. We call it commission breath. They, it's such... Right. It's, it's not attractive at all. It's a repellent, right. like it's so repelling when you're dealing with a desperate person, they try to convince you uh, versus dealing with someone like yourself who either way, you know, I'm going to serve you. I don't need the business. I'll be just fine. I love it. Exactly. Number 10. And I have a, I have a, a bonus one, number 11, but I'll be quick with number 10. And the way I say it is the more selling you do, the less money you make. That's right. Tell us more. Just what that means to you. Tell me, tell me about that. Everybody's been to a car dealership at some point in their life. You step on the car dealership floor. Somebody comes into you and says, the salesperson says, hey, what can I, what are you looking for? What they should say is, listen, we're in a bind. Do you have anything to sell to us? Yeah. What so happens? Smart. So you, you just reverse the script. So the more selling you do in general, the less money you make. And yep. so that car dealer, that car salesperson should not be selling you. They should actually become your customer and then it'll reverse, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and you're talking about an anti-psychological reactance strategy, which is something I talk a lot about and teach a lot of my students is, you know, you, you nailed it. Anytime somebody comes into, uh, uh, runs into a salesperson, these salespeople automatically elicit 
uh, psychological reactants. That's why we walk into a department store and they ask right. you, hey, how can I help you? It's no, I'm not, uh, I'm just looking. <laughs> But that's not true because we know in two or three minutes later, you're pulling your wallet out, buying something, right? So uh, that's a great point. And what's the bonus? So the bonus real quick. So this will take 45 seconds tops. My very first job was I was scooping ice cream in haagen in Santa Monica, 17 something years old. And we opened up the shop around 1030 in the morning. General manager comes in at 11 and says, hey, Ali, you must have been really busy this morning. I'm like, actually, no, no, no. We just, uh, we just opened it up, the shop. He goes, yeah, I know you must have been really busy. I'm like, no, 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 we, we just opened up the shop. And he goes, the third time, he says, yeah, you must have been really busy restocking the product, getting the lobby open, making sure everything is clean. So when the inevitable rush comes in, Ali, you will be prepared. Mm. So what did I learn other than haagen ice cream is awesome at 17 plus years old? I learned be busy, be busiest when it's slow. Mm. I and that's a motto that. of mine. So Fridays at 3 p.m., everybody's talking about the weekend. I am cranking for the next week. So I'm always busy when it's slow. What a great lesson. I mean, that, that, th those are just really good tips and takeaways. A lot of, lot of good things in there. Uh, I want to transition for a minute, just a little bit on the tactical side, right? So <laughs> you have a lot of business experience coming into this industry, as you mentioned. Um, you know, what, what would you say is some of the bigger differences between what you're learning reverse selling is and how it works in comparison to all the traditional sales methodologies that you've come across in your career. And I'd have to imagine it's quite a bit. Yeah. So first of all, um, I've been blessed when I was at Disney or at Procter and Gamble, they make every product in your home. I was, I actually launched Febreze, uh, nice. the product on Febreze. I have more useless facts on Febreze than probably most folks do. Actually, I'll true. just turn the camera there. You see all those Febreze bottles. Those were my babies back in the day. That's great. But, um, anyway, so long story short, to answer your question, you know, we, we have to go, like you always talk about, this is you're playing offense, right? And yeah. so we have to go make the business, right? The best way to anticipate change is to create it, right? And so we're not, people aren't calling us. It, it's very rare, right? And it's not like Disney or P&G where, you know, the, the, it's preordained it, people already know that you're going to go buy that right it yeah. almost sells itself this is completely different and so that's one thing i would say is different uh in this business secondly is and it's really important even, it doesn't matter how seasoned you are or not seasoned you are but getting coaching is critical and so i've kind of considered you as my unofficial coach yeah i have mentors but sure. i i religiously follow your videos i share them with my team because what you're teaching, and I told you this before we jumped on air, is I think even more important for life in general than just real estate. In fact, and I was thinking about this, and this is probably overstepping and you're going to cancel this video on me. But I will tell you this. I think you have a bigger calling. And I don't know you. I, I've known you five minutes, right? But I yeah. think you have a bigger calling that you could be in a role in like public policy or some mm -hmm. kind of sector that you're positively influencing groups, societies, um, structures, because what you're teaching is so applicable to real life. Amazing, man. I, you just gave me goosebumps. And yeah, we just met each other, but it's so funny. The relationship we're going to have after this is going to be uh, pretty cool. Uh, I already yeah. have some thoughts, but um, you know, it's funny. I, I've been getting that feedback quite a bit. And it's absolutely in the cards and how that manifests mm -hmm. itself will be interesting, but thank you for that. For sure. It means a lot. Um, and, you know, going back to a couple of things you just said about this business being an outbound business, mm -hmm. everyone's trying to fight that Ali, the, every realtor is trying to fight that and trying to make it an inbound business with social media and Facebook ads. And, and, and the list is, is goes on forever. Sure. You doing what you're doing. And Sotheby's looking at you saying, oh my gosh, look at this guy. I mean, I want your honest assessment. A new agent comes in this business. Do you think they have any chance at succeeding if they refuse to prospect that they're just going to post images on social media and, and try to go about it that way? It's a no brainer. It, it's the direct <laughs> equivalent of them not even trying. Um, I will tell you a quick hack that I use, that I continue to use that will help new agents and I, I'll help the the folks that have the call reluctance. Yes. So I have my team um, 
you know, they, we've signed up with Vulcan because of you and it's, it's a great system. Um, I have my team send out so many text messages during the week. If I had to guesstimate probably a thousand text messages during the week, and it's a one simple line. And the line is this, hi, Jim, what price would you consider selling one, two, three main street? Right. Love and then it. they go to the next one and they just copy and paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And what we find the, the data is about 10% responses come back and, and give us a number. Once they give us a number, I jump on the phone with them and I reverse sell them until I get a preview appointment that will lead to a uh, listing potentially. So my point there is this, no, it's not that we're not using the phone, but we're using the phone in a kind of a strategic way in terms of we're, we're sending out that text message to make sure it's a warm lead to then jump on the phone. Thousand percent. I love it. Uh, in other words, you are using an ISA approach that is based on a text response so that the person self identifies them before the attorney or the rainmaker or the brain surgeon, in this case, you does any type of surgery, it takes any type of action because now we've self identified. I love it. Uh, on so on the tactical side, um, mm -hmm. with expireds or for sale by owners or anybody for that matter, walk us through that. Just unpack that for a minute. So your goal when you're communicating with them, how is it that you're able to get past that initial resistance when so many other agents are calling them? Maybe uh, how are you able to set the preview appointment? And then we could talk about, you know, what are you focused on when you have that preview appointment and then what happens sure. next? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so post the text message, I'm on the phone with them and I talk about how I completely agree if they could sell the property on their own and save commission, that makes a ton of sense. Right. Yeah. And they initially, the walls come down, as you know, right? Yep. And so then I pivot, I, I use the same model you, you preach, yeah. right? Then I pivot to saying, well, um, you know, have you thought about renting the property? Because gosh, it sounds like such a fantastic property. Why would you sell it? Then again, they start selling me, well, no, the kids are out. The home is too big. And then I said, well, let me go check it out Thursday between, you know, two and five. I set the preview appointment. I go in there. And then again, when I get there, it's all reverse selling. This home is beautiful. And the pattern interrupts are a little over the top with me yeah. and I have some fun with that. So because do I. I don't come, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't come in and say, hi, my name is Ali Spavi. I'm with Sotheby's. I come in and, you know, like last week I, I had this a listing appointment and um, I roll up in my Honda Odyssey. Okay. Sure. So I have a seven-year-old and nine-year-old. Yeah, And I roll up in her beautiful, like multi-million dollar mansion in Beverly Hills with my Honda Odyssey, right? And I get out of the car and she goes, hi, Ali. And I sit and I turn around and I point at the Odyssey and I say, what's this? She goes, your car? I'm like, no, it's sensibility. Mm. And then we walk in. Now, again, I just off the cuff. Yeah. Complete pattern interrupt. She starts laughing. Yeah. She goes, Oh, I used to have an Odyssey back when you know my kids so were good. And then, and then yeah. we just go in and it's about a relationship. No decks, no numbers, yeah. nothing. Now, I will say this, and I this is not chest beating. This is not I don't want it to come across as arrogant. I am really confident in my sales skills. Sure. But that's because I've developed them over years working at these high flying companies, etc. And so I do think there is an important part of the scripts of rehearsing, of getting better at that. Um, I've never been a script guy or, and I don't rehearse. I just go in and I have fun and I connect. Yeah. Um, but I think that's really important for first year agents. Well, I mean, to your point, that is exactly right. I mean, some people only know half of my work. I, when you really get, when you dig in, scripts don't matter at all. I mean, it's right. all about how we make people feel, which is the hardest right. part to teach. And that's exactly right. what you're talking about, which is so abundantly clear on this podcast that you would, you, 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 your confidence is something that people can really feel comfortable with when you're dealing with a seller. Uh, and it makes it easy to do business with you. And this is the thing that is very difficult for uh, inexperienced people just in business it takes some time. It takes some time, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you have that you're talking about. That is so abundantly clear on this podcast. And it's, I'm sure it's going to serve you for the rest of your life. And so, so that's amazing. Uh, so 
question on your follow-up because I would have to imagine that um, some of the big flack I get for my approach from my competitors is, well, you're going to all these appointments that, you know, aren't qualified. You know, it makes a lot more sense for you to qualify, 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 qualify. You're wasting all that time. But what they don't understand is when you get that face-to-face -face appointment, how many more opportunities present themselves, one, and then two, it's all about the follow-up. Do you agree with both of those? And, and, and how would you comment on that? Brandon, and I'm not blowing smoke or pumping sunshine your way. There is nothing you say or do that I disagree with. Hmm. Nothing. So we'll just put it out there. Well, your sports team, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that, but, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but um, the follow-up is key. Now, I have an archaic, uh, you know, caveman approach. I just put it in my Google calendar. Yeah, And absolutely. I just know to just to follow up with this, with this person. Um, I think the other uh, point to follow up is if, if you're not even going to follow up, then don't bother making the initial contact. What's yep. the point? But a lot of agents, because they, they feel like, okay, I've already reached out, so I'm good. They're going to reach back out to me. That's kind of the misconception out there. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And, and, and so would it be safe to say that 80, 90% of your business comes through follow-up, not the initial contact? I've only had one listing that I did over the phone that was completely a one-off. 99% is from go. the follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I by the way, it. that's when, when I was at uh, Disney really quick, when we were launching Toy Story 2, the folks behind the scenes were in production on Toy Story 3. We call that pipeline, right? Yes. It's the same thing in this business, right? So I know that I have a pipeline coming up and it's lead maturity also is, is, activating at the same time so then what happens is the follow-up becomes your pipeline that's right right and that's how the business is formed and 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 grown actually that is another piece that new people to this business just they don't understand it until they live it i keep saying it but you know in one ear out the other okay. uh pipeline maturity is a very fascinating process but uh for most people they have to experience it so rewind the clocks uh 16 months ago or, or better yet, all the new agents that watch or listen to this podcast, um, looking at your success so early on in, in, uh, in your sales career in real estate, say to themselves, well, you know, I don't know how relatable this guy is. He's this big business executive. He's got all this experience. Mm -hmm. He's been investing. But what advice would you give to a new realtor putting all of that aside to say, listen, if you can do these couple of things, you're going to win. You're going to win the game of real estate. What would some of those tips be? Three things. Number one is they're your 30 contacts a day. Now let's define contacts. Yes. Contact doesn't mean I reached out. A contact means a conversation, people. So let's actually reframe 30 contacts to mean 30 conversations per day. I think that's a little more actionable for folks to understand. Sure. That's number one. Uh, number two is get a coach yesterday. And the coach is right in front of you. You're not paying me for this. I'm not, there's no like kickbacks. They should hire you. Whatever your cost is, it's going to pay out in spades. That's number two. And then number three is, I think uh, just getting out there and you talk about the learning is in the doing, getting out there and making mistakes, falling forward, uh, leveraging your mistakes. You talk about staying in the pocket, all of those things. That's a big number three, but really just, learn the learning is in the doing they have to do that's Period. right love it man this is great i mean i could talk to you literally for days and i'm sure <laughs> in the up and coming weeks and months we will um what's I the what's that. the what's the goal for the rest of the year what's the team's goal for 2022 uh you're gonna be like this guy is crazy we want to make one dollar tell me more and then let me tell you why that is because it, it's just like when you go okay i'm gonna go start running today well you're not gonna go run five miles you're going to take one step. Then yeah. what are you going to do? And you're going to be like, well, I just did one step. Then I'm going to do two steps. Then I'm going to do three steps. So I could say a hundred million dollars, but we're going to say $1. We're going to get that dollar. And we're like, oh, well, maybe we can do $2. Maybe we can do $3. So the goal has always been $1. Yeah. <laughs> I've made the $1 and sure. we're going to go after $2. So um, listen, this is not contrived. This is not a uh, flash in the pan kind of thing for me. I will tell you this. I am in a desperate, desperate race against myself. Mm. That is no BS, no 
uh, sugar coating, I am in a race against myself. And the expectation, the standard that I hold myself to is almost insurmountable, almost crazy. And so uh, that, that nobody has to self-police me. There's, I've never had my broker say, well, are you doing, what are you doing? It's the standard is so high for myself and I'm in a race against myself. Wow. I love it, man. This is great. Uh, um, it now all makes sense why you are getting the results you're getting. Uh, very exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm thank sure you. everybody will uh, thank you in the comments once we upload this to YouTube. So appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, I'm glad our paths have crossed. It means a lot. Thank you for the kind words. And I wish you and your team nothing but the best moving forward. So appreciate you. Brandon, anything I can do for you, please shout out. Let me know. I love it. All right, Ali, take Thank care. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.